mean, the obvious thing to me about this garden is that this is as happy a garden as you would ever be in. Well, yes, we've tried to create that feeling of good karma. And, you, you know, you hear the sound of the water, lots of colour, which, as you know, sort of brings happiness into yeah. the garden. So, no, it works really well, actually. And this, the beehive ginger. Oh! Isn't that something? Oh! Now, oh. again, look, I'm not joking when I tell you that was only planted out from a six-inch pot about two and a half years ago. So it was about that big. And look at it now. This is its first flowering. And there'd have to be, you know, 50 flowers on there. Oh, gee, I love, I love your water. Water, water everywhere. Oh. <laughs> and we should point out that the easy way to tell the difference between a tropical water lily and the cooler climate ones is the tropicals tend to stand up on a stem. Exactly, yes. Yep. And you get blues. You don't get much in the way of blues in the ordinary old-fashioned water. No, lily. and actually those blue ones that you see there, they flower right through the winter. Unlike a lot of other water yeah. lilies that actually die back, these are evergreen. And that, how good is that? Yeah, that, that water feature, yeah, no, it works really well. Oh, yep. you just want to go up in there and see what's in there. But in fact, now, I'm, look, I'm sorry to seem negative here, yep. but, you know, you're a trickster, you're a faker. What's at the end of that? <laughs> Another house. <laughs> <laughs> it, looks it looks like, like it goes it, forever, doesn't it? it yeah, exactly. Does. It's yeah. all that illusion, Don, and that's what gardening can be about, you know. And, and one of the bamboos that I do love, the old Buddha belly. Well, here's you've got the giant Buddha belly there. Isn't that lovely? Gorgeous plant, that one. And I love the green stems on it, you know. Yes. It really is perfect. It really, it does look like it's been made out of plastic or something. Yeah, it like doesn't that. look real, does it? Oh. Oh. There'll be so many people, if they've seen it already, they're probably wondering what that silver thing is. The Bismarckia nobilis has to be one of the most majestic palms on the planet, actually. That gorgeous blue colour. Oh. And of course, the yellow and the red from the coals really accentuates yeah. the colour of the palm. The other thing is, is there's quite a bit of cheating in here. There's a absolutely to die for variegated agave there, which I suppose you wouldn't think of as being sort of a tropical plant. True, it's the, what we call the barley agave, and they use it everywhere through barley, but the colours are just so oh. magical, you know, so it really works in well. You know, I go for form, texture, colour, and just blend that all into, into the tropical style. I assume also that you actually did do a proper design for all of this before you started building? It was all up here. Oh, really? <laughs> put and look? Nothing was ever put down on paper. looks to be 200 acres. Roughly how big would this be? Well, this section you're looking at here, Don, mm. is only one quarter acre. That's all it is. Really? But it has that illusion of being bigger because we've again blocked out our neighbours like we did with the original uh, I, I hadn't seen, but that's just a wretched paling fence. Yes, through there, But just you don't see there. it. No, no, no. That's and right. And in fact, with vertical cracks between them, it looks like the it, palms and bamboo-y things that are growing exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so, quarter acre, have we seen it all? Uh, well, there's still a lot more to see. Oh, let's go. While we're walking over it, what's the lawn? This is a, a soft buffalo called palmetto, uh, palmetto, Don. Okay. And it has that real tropical touch to it, you know. Gee whiz, you've got colour everywhere. So it's on a dirt base or what? Now this is on a cement base, Don. It was just some river rocks that we had left over and it sort of gives like a little bit of a Japanese oriental touch to lovely. the garden. Absolutely lovely. Oh, and you've got that, the, the black... Um, Elephant's ears. That's it, isn't it gorgeous? Oh, there? I love it. Absolutely love it. But check this out here, the Timor Black. Oh, isn't that isn't lovely? Isn't that a lovely colour? Yeah. And that, this one is not invasive? No, again, it's a clumping bamboo, Don. Yeah. And really, to tell you the truth, just how easy they are to, uh, to control, see this stem here? Yeah. Oh, that's for lunch? Yeah. I love asparagus. That's for you, mate. Just fantastic. That's for you. Yeah, there's quite Two a bit and a to see. half years. It's just impossible to believe it, yeah. to be honest. Well, I think it's a combination of the good soil, a um, bit of fertiliser, and, and just, you know, a bit of watering, and yeah, these are the results. What fertilisers do you use? We use organic based fertilisers, but don't forget, Don, you're here in the subtropics, so everything grows quicker than what, you know, where you come from. I mean, this is obviously the future of, of Queensland garden. 
Well, I'd like to think so, Don. I mean, we live in the subtropics. These plants do so well for so little effort and so little work. Why shouldn't we be growing this style of garden up here? And, and we should point out, almost all of this could be done down south, whether it's Melbourne or even Hobart. A lot of these effects you could create with cooler climate plants down there. Absolutely. You've got some fantastic, wonderful foliage plants down that grow in Sydney and Melbourne. So you can create the same kind yeah. of effect down there. All you do is just use different kinds of plants. Yeah. I mean, how good is that?